Today's topic dives into a weapon so powerful it can wipe out an entire city in seconds. The B-83 nuclear bomb. It's America's most powerful nuclear weapon still in service, capable of leveling entire urban landscapes, and it remains on standby decades after the Cold War. While stealth bombers and hypersonic missiles dominate headlines, the B-83 quietly endures for one chilling reason, nothing else can do what it does. So, why hasn't it been retired? And what makes this bomb so uniquely terrifying, even in today's high-tech military era? Let's break it down. It was designed in the late 1970s, during the height of the Cold War, a time when the US and the Soviet Union raced to outmatch each other, with ICBMs, strategic bombers, and submarine-launched missiles. This was the nuclear triad in full force. The bomb was developed by Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory, with production led by Los Alamos National Laboratory. Its goal? To replace the aging B-53 bomb, a 9-megaton beast that no longer fit the precision warfare emerging after Vietnam. The B-83 was born for a new generation of conflict, one that demanded precision, penetration, and deterrence. It's a thermonuclear weapon, meaning it uses a two-stage process. A fission explosion triggers a secondary fusion explosion, just like how the sun creates energy. This makes the B-83 insanely efficient and devastatingly powerful. Physically, the B-83 is about 12 feet, or 3.7 meters long, and 18 inches, or 46 centimeters in diameter. It weighs nearly 2,400 pounds, or about 1,100 kilograms. Its aerodynamic aluminum body is built for high-speed air delivery, and it features a re-entry vehicle-style nose cone. The shape mirrors what you'd see on hypersonic glide vehicles, or MIRVs, allowing it to penetrate enemy defenses at supersonic speeds. Inside, it contains uranium and plutonium components. Surrounded by high-explosive lenses that compress the core, triggering both fission and fusion. The result? Temperatures exceeding 100 million degrees Celsius, hotter than the core of the sun. Within milliseconds, a shockwave flattens everything in a multi-kilometer radius. The thermal pulse causes instant third-degree burns, miles away. And the mushroom cloud? It rises high into the sky, launching radioactive fallout into the jet stream. If detonated at altitude, the electromagnetic pulse alone could knock out electronics, across an entire region. This isn't just a bomb, it's a force of nature, and a haunting reminder of how destructive human science can be. The B-83 was engineered for mission flexibility. Its dial-a-yield setting allows crews to adjust the power from just a few kilotons to its full 1.2 megaton yield. But how does that work? The crew can enable or disable specific nuclear components, like how many fusion stages are triggered, or how much tritium boosting is used. These settings are configured before flight, based on the mission's objective. In practice, it means the same bomb can act as a low-yield tactical nuke, or a city-flattening megaton weapon. The B-83 has a maximum yield of 1.2 megatons. If detonated, the it would cover an estimated destructive area of unimaginable scale. Here's what that kind of power could do. Fireball radius, 1.2 kilometers, or about three quarters of a mile. Everything inside that zone, vaporized. Steel, concrete, even bone. Gone in a flash hotter than the sun. Air blast at 20 PSI, roughly two and a half kilometers out. At this range, reinforced concrete buildings collapse completely. This is a zone of total destruction. Severe damage zone, 5 kilometers, or around 3 miles. Most residential buildings would be flattened. Casualties here would be near total. Thermal radiation, up to 15 kilometers, or about 10 miles away. People exposed could suffer third-degree burns. Fires would break out across entire neighborhoods. Fallout zone, if the bomb detonates at surface level, this is where wind and terrain come into play. Radiation could spread for tens, even hundreds of kilometers downwind. Now let's put it into perspective. Imagine an airburst over downtown Los Angeles. 
the city center annihilated. Fire and blast damage would reach as far as Hollywood, Pasadena, and Santa Monica. Even Glendale and Inglewood could suffer from thermal burns. So how powerful is the B-83 compared to history's first atomic bomb? Hiroshima was 15 kilotons. The B-83? 1,200 kilotons. That's 80 times more powerful. And yet, it's never been used in war. It can be detonated in mid-air for maximum shockwave effect or deep underground to destroy reinforced bunkers. It's deployed by some of America's most powerful aircraft, the B-52 Stratofortress, the B-1B Lancer, and most notably, the stealth-capable B-2 Spirit. Soon, it may even be carried by the B-21 Raider. This made the B-83 not just a bomb, but a strategic tool of American military dominance. Unlike some other bombs, the B-83 was never miniaturized for missiles or submarine launch. Why? Because it wasn't designed for stealth, it was designed for impact. So why is it still around today? Even after multiple arms reduction treaties, the B-83 remains one of the last high-yield gravity bombs in the U.S. nuclear arsenal. While newer tactical nukes, like the B-61 Mod 12, are designed for limited strikes, the B-83 is one of the only bombs capable of penetrating deep underground bunkers with overwhelming force. That's something even cruise missiles or submarine-launched warheads struggle to do. Its very existence serves as a strategic message to rival military powers. From missile bunkers in North Korea, to underground air bases in China, to hardened command centers in Russia, it silently reminds the world, cross the line, and this is what you face. Interestingly, the B-83 has even been considered for non-military purposes. Some scientists once proposed using it to deflect or destroy an incoming asteroid. Yes, like in the movie Armageddon. Its raw explosive force could, in theory, shift the path of a threatening asteroid. Though the idea remains highly controversial, both ethically and scientifically. Despite its power, the B-83 remains a hot topic in political and scientific circles. Some argue it's outdated, unnecessarily dangerous, and too expensive for modern warfare. But others insist, no other US weapon can match its deep penetration capabilities. And in an age where adversaries are digging deeper, literally, that feature still matters. What's next for the B-83? The Obama administration started plans to phase it out. The Biden administration followed with similar intentions. But in late 2022, those plans were reversed. Why? Growing global threats and mounting pressure from defense officials and military advisors. Retaining the B-83 wasn't just about war fighting. It was about signaling strength, especially in an era of rising tensions in the Indo-Pacific and Eastern Europe. But keeping it in service comes with a cost. Its lifespan has been extended, but each passing year makes it harder to justify against newer, smaller, and safer weapons. Still, some experts argue that no modern nuclear bomb matches its exact combination of yield flexibility, strategic reach, and bunker-busting power. Until a true replacement is created, the B-83 will likely remain in the shadows, waiting. The B-83 may be old, but its legacy is far from over. In a world of rising tensions and evolving threats, this silent giant still holds the line. What other Cold War tech is quietly shaping today's battlefield? We'll cover that and much more in upcoming videos. So if you're fascinated by powerful machines, hidden engineering, and military secrets, hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell. You don't want to miss what's next. This is Corecraft Engineering, explaining genius inventions and engineering and the forces that shape our world.